if Pillion is Greedo, Thrawn is the Han yeah. of reaction times, where he's just like, he can dodge blaster bolts. Well, to be fair, Greedo still thinks he won that. Machanki. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Hello there, I'm Darren. And I'm Doogie. And this is The Real Sequels, the series of events that happened after episode 6 in the books, novels, and sometimes comics in the Expanded Universe. And today we're looking at chapter 22, Two Ducks, 22. What? It's a bingo phrase. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, we're looking at chapter 22 for this video. And it starts with Han and Lando in a meeting with Talon Card. And Han is explaining the deal that he's been trying to make with the smugglers for shipping contracts for the New Republic. And Card says, well, yeah, that's quite an interesting deal, but I'm afraid it's not a wise move for my organization because Card's operation extends into Imperial space as well as New Republic space. If the Empire find out that they were making like an official trading deal with the New Republic, it would look like Talon Card is picking sides and obviously his operations in Imperial space would probably suffer as a result. So Han says, you know, I'd like to try and convince you otherwise, and Talon's like, well, we've been at this for two hours, let's take a break for dinner. And so they head off to the dining hall, and it's there that Card introduces Ghent, one of the best slicers in all the galaxy, to Han and Lando. So during the meal, Card gets an emergency call on his comlink, and he excuses himself. So we switch scenes to Card and Mara Jade in the communications room and we see that an Imperial Star Destroyer has arrived on Merkur. They recognise the ship as the Chimera. So when Card answers the call, he's expecting Pelion, mm -hmm. but instead he's greeted by Thrawn. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. This is a whole lot more serious. This guy's actually got reaction times. Yeah. <laughs> if Pillion is Greedo, Thrawn is the Han yeah. of reaction times, where he's just like, he can dodge blaster bolts. Well, to be fair, Greedo still thinks he won that. <laughs> Much like your character in our role-playing session, where he shot a grenade with a plasma gun and thought, yeah, this will work. This won't end in my death. It's just crazy enough to work. <laughs> it, didn't, it did not work. I died. You nearly killed our entire party as well, not just yourself. <laughs> if you're gonna die, do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> There was another campaign. Oh, was your Star Wars campaign where I'd like linked the ship to my heart monitor? So even if I accidentally died, the entire ship died. <laughs> the next time they go into hyperspace, it just folds in on itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Thrawn explains that there's a few reasons why he's visiting Merkur. The first is that they need more Ysalamiri. The second is that Thrawn is looking for some spare warships that Card might have. And the third is that he wants to have a wee chat with Card about why he didn't join in for the search for Luke Skywalker. And oddly enough, he reacts more to the mention of spare warships than he does to the mention of Luke Skywalker. But it's just interesting because there's been a hint before and it's just nice to see again a wee like breadcrumb there for anyone who's read the book before it's kind of cool for like people that haven't as well it's just that kind of thing of like talent cards trying to be a neutral party as much as possible he's just trying to play both sides as much as he can yeah but it feels like he is between a rock and a hard place he has to join a side at some stage here mm -hmm. he's got thrown up his ass <laughs> he literally has look in a bunker you're looking real good girl <laughs> pasta booby no matter I'll just build another one. And uh, Han and Lando are also there. And so <laughs> yeah, just, just leave me alone, I want to make money. <laughs> Spinning like seven plates at once. <laughs> and none of the plates can see each other. <laughs> 
So whenever Thrawn brings up Luke Skywalker, he relaxes a wee bit because he's like, oh, okay, I can shift the conversation onto this and this is easier for me to deal with because he's just like, well, you know, we just uh, we just couldn't spare any ships at the time and Thrawn immediately picks up on that and says, well, the search is still ongoing. So if you have some time now, perhaps you can join, but we will talk about it more when I arrive. And then Thrawn cuts off the call and Card just sits there for like, a few moments staring at the screen all these different disaster scenarios flipping through his head of like well poodoo <laughs> <laughs> dank fark <laughs> yeah yeah literally <laughs> i like how he allows himself a few minutes to just have a wee meltdown <laughs> <laughs> relatable <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> but yeah he quickly gathers his thoughts back together and then he turns to Marjid and he says right get some men to move the Millennium Falcon further back into the forest then you take Luke Skywalker's lightsaber and put it in one of the other equipment sheds I will go tell Han and Lando and get them out of the way and then we will prepare for Thrawn to arrive. And as Card is giving his orders, Mara is like, well, why don't we just hand Luke over to the Empire now? And they kind of go back and forth, but Card basically says, look, I don't negotiate whenever there's a Star Destroyer hanging over my head. We don't have any guarantee of like a bounty on any of these people, and so it would be a negotiation. We'd be handing them over and relying on Thrawn's goodwill to actually compensate us for our efforts because mm -hmm. Thrawn could easily just say oh thanks and then give them nothing yeah. because they have a Star Destroyer in orbit over the base and even if they give him something I mean if, they, if he gives them Han Lando and look that's three Republic heroes he's gonna lose all of his business in Republic space mm. you know so even yeah. if it was like a thousand a hundred thousand credits a million credits I mean really what's that worth the card at this stage yeah totally and as you say, Card is trying his best to be as neutral as possible until he can figure out the best deal for himself. Mm -hmm. So Marit says, I don't agree, but I'll accept your decision. <laughs> QC. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't agree with it, but I accept it. Yeah. <laughs> Underrated film. Yeah, really is. So after that, they both leave to carry out their different jobs. So then the chapter switches to Luke and he's just finishing up connecting the power supply from his hand to the locking mechanism for the door. And so the door slides open with no fuss and Luke dives through the door, which obviously closes behind him. So he then does another quick scan about and nothing happens. So he walks over to the other half of the shed and he gets R2 out of the restraint collar that he's in. So Luke and R2 make their way out of the equipment shed and they skirt around the edge of the clearing in the forest, making their way towards where Luke thinks his X-Wing is. But when they arrive, the X-Wing is gone. It's been moved. So Luke decides, well, we would have had to stop somewhere and find a different ship with a working hyperdrive anyway. We might as well skip to that step now. And so he gets R2 to do a quick scan of the ships that are nearby. And R2 indicates an unusual looking ship. They make their way over, they get inside, and they take off. In the comic, the ship makes a very particular noise. It goes wang, mm. and then there's a huge gratuitous ass shot of Mara Jade. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's actually about to come up, because the next scene is... Describes the ass. Yes, the next scene describes the ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, not literally, Darren. <laughs> but yeah, so Luke and R2 start to leave, and chapter 22 ends with Marjid walking towards the equipment shed to put Luke's lightsaber away. Mm -hmm. And as she's making her way towards this equipment shed, she hears the skip ray blast boat take off. Mm -hmm. And she looks over and she's like, why is that taking off? What's Card thinking? And after a moment, she realizes, oh no, that's not one of our people doing that. So she runs over to the equipment shed where Luke was being held. She opens up and it's empty, obviously. So she's like, that's Skywalker. She pulls out her comm link to call Card and let him know. But before she does, she realizes, I can't do that. If I 
say Luke Skywalker's name over an open comm link, the Imperials are going to hear, mm -hmm. and then we're going to be in even more trouble. So that leaves Mara Jade with only one option. She sprints over to where the ship took off from, and she gets into a different skip ray blast boat, takes off, and starts giving chase. And that's where the chapter ends. That's a bit of a, a, an exciting one. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've got a lot of elements happening. We've got uh, <laughs> neutral talent card doing his thing and uh, <laughs> trying to play both sides. Struggling because he has the uh, the bit of gold in Luke Skywalker. He's got Han and Lando that obviously, if they know Luke's there, they're going to take him. That'll put him in hot water with the Imperials. If the Imperials take him, it'll put him in hot water with the Republic. If the if the Imperials know that Han and Lando are there, it'll put them in hot water with the Republic. It's, it's just a big mess. Mm. That he's kind of trying to sift his way through. But see, to be honest, I think this might actually be, for Talon, maybe the perfect thing to happen. Because it gets rid of that look situation. So now he, all he's got is two parties. And he's a neutral party. So at the very worst, if that's discovered, then that's fine. To a certain extent. But of course, looks the big kind of spanner in the works. But if he's gone, then he's gone. As long as he doesn't get picked up in one of Talon Card's skip rays. Uh, that, that could be a bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's about all we have time for for this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out the rest of the videos at the end of this one. Bye. Bye.